Hi there, this is Self Critical Automaton, and this is episode 2 of my Let's Play of Bayonetta. So, this episode is primarily going to be cutscenes again, because there's a lot of cutscenes, but there will also be a lot of actual gameplay. It's going to be a bit longer than usual because, well, there is no good stopping place in the prologue chapter. Uh, most of the other chapters of the game will be either single episodes that are about 20 minutes or, well, single chapters that take about 20 minutes or they will be half of a chapter, which will take about 20 minutes for the longer chapters. So, uh, yeah, so let's get started with a very long cutscene. Yeah, this game starts with a character pissing on the director's grave, and it kind of continues in that fashion the whole way through. Uh, it, it looks like Humpty Dumpty's taking his last fall. Even old Eggman the Destroyer gets scrambled in the end, right? You know, I still don't get why the hell you drag me out here for these things. I just drop off the merchandise. Hey, bet you can't guess what today is. Reading the good lord's book ain't gonna do much. People have been waiting for this asshole to get whacked for ages. Please. Hell, look around. There's no love lost for old Humpty Dumpty. But you gotta keep the outfit happy. We don't take care of him, they take care of us. And I prefer my shoes made out of rubber, not concrete. But hey, it's that kind of town, without good-hearted souls like us to put these bastards six feet under, where'd society be? Of course, the pay's not bad either. <laughs> Jesus, you really get into this shit, don't you? If it were me, I'd be praying he ends up barbecue, or at least sunny side up. <laughs> You can keep praying, but the only way this guy's meeting the Lord is if God's hungry for breakfast. <laughs> Speaking of hungry, we done here. My kids are baking me a birthday cake tonight. Cute little fuckers, I tell you what. Well then, adios. What the fuck? They're here? For this douchebag? Ah! I hate this damn light! I can't see a thing! Oh! But they're there, ain't they? You hearing me? You, you can see them, can't you? I see them. They are instruments of God, descending upon his heavenly rays to Earth. Oh my God! Dear Lord, grant us guidance, and keep safe the souls of our loved ones for all eternity. I've always wanted a pair of glasses like that.
tired. Let me tuck you in. So they set up a very melodramatic toad and then completely undercut it and then just remain very, very goofy for the entire rest of the game. Fly Me to the Moon is actually a recurring leitmotif throughout this game for reasons I don't yet understand. Shots from me to Bayonetta. The baseball gag has always been one of my favorites everywhere I see it. As long as there's music, I'll keep on dancing. Okay, and finally we're able to do some stuff. So at this point the game proper actually starts and immediately dumps you into some tutorials during this first combat. That's a pretty easy one to do. And this one's pretty easy too. So there's three main attacks throughout the game. You can do a punch or a kick or you can fire your guns and these are used for all sorts of different things. Sequences of punches and kicks do combos, like every other game of this type, um, and if you do enough of them you get a good effect. The guns are involved in this as well, but that's mostly a kind of a chaining thing that I'll talk about in a second. You also have a dodge move, just like every single game of this type, and if you time it right, 
well. Generally speaking, it gets you out of the way of trouble. If you time it perfectly, you get what we're about to learn about now, which is witch time. So if you dodge just before you're hit, you activate witch time, during which, uh, pun unintended. So it's time for the witch in witch time, which is time for the witch in time. Which time is in time for the witch? I don't know. Anyway, so you get a few seconds to just completely wail freely on everything while it's in slow motion, and that's extremely useful in some of the quite crowded fights. Let's see if I can do that again. Yep, see? And every different enemy attack has uh, different timings on when to dodge, and getting the dodge timings down is basically the most important part of playing this game effectively. I basically never use the lock on though, so don't worry about that. Halo, a rare spiritual metal containing the essence of an angel's life force, used in business transactions within Inferno. Each of the collectible items that pop up are going to have a splash screen like this the first time, but then not do it afterwards, so I'll just read them out each time. So it's generally better to dodge early than late, <laughs> because if you get hit, that has, you know, implications for your score. What you want to do is to try and get your uh, combo points as high as possible, because those translate directly into bonus halos, and the halos are income. So your combo points go up every time you do damage to an opponent, pretty much with anything, and you get different points for different attacks. Combos are better than um, ordinary weak hits, and yeah, and bullets. So the main purpose of the guns is actually to let you chain combos over longer distances. So if you are, you know, if I kill these two guys, the next thing I need to fight is further away. In the amount of time it would take me to travel to where they are, my combo timer would run out, which, you know, it's reset every time you uh, hit an opponent. It's actually not unlike uh, the use of uh, the manual trick in skateboarding games. So in a skateboarding game, you do your tricks and then uh, the combo timer, you know, runs out while you're moving to the next place you want to do tricks. So you do a manual, which is a, a mobile trick you do on the way. Similarly, in this, you, uh, ah, you see, I left it slightly too long and then I, uh, Lost my combo multiplier. Uh, pretty much the only benefit of the combo multiplier is that it looks cool and it gets you bonus rings and uh, you get a, an overall combat uh, rating based on your combo multiplier at the end of the level. So this is another mechanic which is that if you are doing a combo and then you just hold whichever button it is you're tapping, you're supposed to start shooting but she doesn't seem to be. There we go. So that's a mechanic I rarely use, and this is a mechanic that I almost always forget I have as an option. So if you're facing a bunch of weak enemies, you can go into this like targeted Beautiful. bullet combo mode and you just, you know, fire as fast as possible. You do a lot more damage and you fire a lot faster than in if you are using the, you know, standard gun attack. But for the most part, uh, you don't really want to be doing damage with your guns, it's just to keep your combo multiplier going in between, uh, you know, actual melee combos. But, um, yeah, it's a major source of rings which you need for upgrading all sorts of stuff throughout the game. Um, and mechanically, that's most of it, except for a couple things that will be added in the next combat sequence, which will happen after a couple more cutscenes, once I finish these guys off, of course. So. Throughout the game, I'm probably going to be talking about several different things. I'm going to be talking about um, the nature of camp. I'm going to be talking about, you know, directorial humour and uh, staginess as a concept, and um, a total, total lack of pretension, which I really enjoy. It's really frustrating to me how many um, media properties, especially nowadays, have a kind of a shameful self-consciousness. Um, like they're embarrassed about what they are. How many um, how many superhero movies make jokes about how silly the costumes look while then having costumes that are, you know, not even as good as the as the comics? It's kind of um, kind of puerile almost. It's a sort of a a childish embarrassment about being what you are or being into what you're into. Whereas um, this game just absolutely is completely maximalist. Everything in it is done as much as possible.
Additionally, it has absolutely zero shame. There's no embarrassment or shame in it whatsoever, and I find that really empowering. Haven't you figured it out yet? There's no quarter for you in this world. So I also really like that there is that split second of a vulnerability when she realizes she fucked up and destroyed the car. But um, it's immediately gone. A, you know, a second later she's back to her completely untouchable confident self. Um, but yeah, this game's complete lack of pretension and self-consciousness about what it is is one of my major draws for it. It just it knows it's cool, it knows what cool things are, and it is completely unashamed about any of it. So that previous cutscene was a kind of cutscene that's very common in the game, but is un kind of odd as cutscenes go. I've never seen that style used anywhere else. It's completely static. All of the models are static, but they're also live rendered, which means that things like stuff flapping in the wind or with motion still applies. And I don't know if that was a deliberate aesthetic choice or if it was some kind of a, a cost-saving measure that they that the developers had to include in order to be able to fit everything in, in budge, uh, under budget. So that's the end of the first combat sequence, and it's time for more cutscenes. Radon should be paying me for even touching these toys. You have any idea how much this is going to cost to fix? How the fuck do I always get wrapped up in this shit? Engine still purrs nicely. Now, about this little thing you've been looking into for me, Enzo. Let's have a quick chat. See? This is why I told you I was going home. I just got held up in the air by some invisible things, and you want an intelligence briefing? It never stops with you! You keep belly aching like that, and you're liable to wake Eggman from the dead. And I don't think either of you would like that. Ah! Catch you later, Bayonetta. Something tells me you're gonna need a rush on our special project before the shit hits the fan. Wait, Rodan. What about Eggman? Such a popular chap. I bet they hate him down there as much as you did when he was up here. We just need to make sure he won't come crawling back when they kick him out. Nothing a flower bed can't fix. Fill her up. You heard the man. Finish up in five minutes or you're walking home to your cake and candles. What? Don't you leave me here! So I think it's pretty effective, uh, and it clearly saved them a huge amount of development time, but I do have criticisms of it that I will talk about at some other point. Said I earned on this charade to pay for the damage. I tell you what, if I could see them bastards that did this to my car, forget about it. Enzo, the road. Uh, pay attention. Uh, 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 how can you be so calm? You're still getting screwed in all this, too. Of all the low life scum in too deep in this town, I've never seen one get wrapped up in a fight with God's messengers. Uh, 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 I love the billboards in the background. Oh, dressed like a nun, too! When you end up in the afterlife, that's not going to be pretty. I can't help it if I like the little outfits. The toys are nice, too. <laughs> what does that mean? One years ago, you woke up stuck in a casket at the bottom of a lake. All you can remember is that you're a witch. But now, you're stuck because you gotta sacrifice our halo-wearing friends every day or they'll drag your ass back down to hell. I know, I thought I got screwed, but being forced to slap around the divine for a living? That's really getting screwed. If I needed a biographer, you wouldn't be my first choice. I see to the funeral, you get me the information I asked for. That was our deal. Ha 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 ha, come on now! Look at my poor car! I'm working for free after this! 
At least let me get a drink at Rodan's before you start drilling me. The info I got is good. It's gonna get you close to finding the other stone in the pair and figuring out some of that lost past of yours. I swear. Very important lost pasta. <laughs> After jewels instead of cash. Just like a girl. <laughs> Jesus, can't you take a joke? Enzo, someone's given you a present. Hey, too bad. I can't stand bugs. And that was the moment Bayonetta fell in love. You? What's the matter, Bayonetta? All that sleeping made you soft. <laughs> I love that little quirk. She just looks at the camera right there. It's very good. So this combat introduces a couple more mechanics, namely the magic gauge, which is a gauge that fills up as you do damage to opponents and lets you do certain special attacks as it gets more full. The uh, magic gauge, when it's full, you can do a torture attack, which is a special animation that does a whole bunch of extra damage. Um, I thought they were like finisher attacks that resulted in an insta-kill, but they're not actually. They uh, just do a huge amount of bonus damage and grant you bonus rings. They're very useful for taking out troublesome enemies before they become too much of a problem. The other use of the magic gauge is that there are special attacks called wicked weaves that you can do based on how much magic gauge you have full. It's uh, also a mechanic that is um, evidenced here is that if a cutscene is taking place, sorry, if a combat takes place during which time, narratively speaking then uh, it also take then you have no witch time available during the actual uh, fight itself. You can only go into witch time if the narrative isn't already taking place in witch time at that moment. Which I think is neat but is also frustrating when you get you know kind of reliant on using witch time to dodge stuff. But um, additionally if you get hit your magic gauge decreases massively so you really 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 need to not get hit which is why dodging is so important. And then that's this sequence completed. They make it clear that they've fought alongside one another a great amount in the past, just by how easily they flow with one another.
Ah, no, that would be when she fell in love. Fair enough. Those assholes sure know how to get attention. Even perk the ears of the hotheads down home. You don't say. It's getting harder and harder to tell the worlds apart. <gasps> Human world. <gasps> Inferno. <gasps> Paradiso. Who can tell the difference? Note the mirroring between the ceiling mural and his explanation. Even harder with Purgatorio in the middle. Fight long enough in there and you'll really lose sight. Why the sudden interest in metaphysics? It's a balance, right? Even if some of them like messing around with the humans, we've all got a stake in the status quo. But people keep fucking around like this, the Book of Revelations is gonna look like Mother Goose. Heaven and hell are gonna go straight for each other's throats. Heaven and hell can tear each other to pieces for all I care. I've got my own problems to worry about. Something's up. Everything was a bit too brazen. And Enzo's tip makes the timing too perfect. This reeks of a setup. Someone in one of those lost memories calling you out. I got a little present for you. These babies are special. Built from an alloy the devil himself would kill to get his hands on. Don't break these, because they're one of a kind. I don't go in for strange offers. Then again, I'm getting a little tired of these weaklings they keep throwing at me. Maybe I should aim for something a bit more high class. Pounding them down tonight, baby. Not to butt into your affairs, but I'm pretty sure you got somewhere better to be. The guys you're up against aren't the type to wait for you to finish a round. Enzo, her drinks are going on your tab, buddy. <sighs> you did beat motherfucker. Everyone hates Enzo, I am no exception. So, at the end of each chapter, you are graded. <laughs> and you get a trophy based on how well you did. Some of the uh, unlockable things in the game are based on um, how many trophies of a certain type you get. So, you know, that's just another way in which it encourages replay and, uh, you know, playing the same missions over and over until you get a perfect score. But uh, for the most part, I'm happy to take a gold. The trophies in order go. Stone, which is which has an Enzo statue. Bronze, which has a statue of a character who will show up later. Silver, which, again, statue of a character who shows up later. Gold, which is Rodin. And then Platinum, which is Bayonetta. And Perfect Platinum, which I think is also Bayonetta. Just in a better pose, maybe? Anyway. So, you're graded on each combat based on combo, time, and the amount of damage you take. And then at the end of the mission you are penalised for any items that you have used and any times you have died and needed to continue from a checkpoint. So yeah, in general I'm happy to take a gold. I'm hoping for a few platinums though. 
And yeah, that's how that mechanic works. There is one more little thing here before the end of this uh, episode, which is Angel Attack. So Angel Attack is this little mini game at the end of every chapter. Uh, you get a certain number of bullets for free, I think, and some enemies drop them by chance when they die, and also there are certain items in each level that you can smash which might drop bullets. Uh, it's just a straightforward um, point and click shoot type of thing, and based on how well you do you get some bonus stuff for the next chapter. But um, it's quite difficult to do with a key uh, with a controller, so I tend to switch over to the mouse and keyboard. Is that cheating? I don't know. Let's, you know, why don't you decide whether that's cheating? So, it's generally easier to get a good score with mouse and keyboard, because you can be so much more precise, but I am not acquitting myself perfectly just yet. Uh, let's see if I can get up to 50. Ah, oh, no. Still, 45 is, 45 is about average for me, I think. You can't save your reward points between chapters, you have to spend them all at this point, so... Yeah, the best things, in my opinion, are generally getting a, a large healing item, or ideally this one, which automatically restores you uh, to like half health whenever you die. Uh, using an item is 25% as much of a penalty as dying and continuing from a checkpoint, so having a few of those in your inventory is extremely useful. Um, but for now, I'm just going to get a basic healing item and then turn the rest of them into bonus halos. This map will be returning to throughout the game as well. Between every chapter, it just updates your position in the plot. And I think it's quite a lovely illustration as well. So yeah, that's going to be all for today. I will catch you later. Bye! If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.